Now, many of us can feel like we've become stuck. We are who we are, we've become what we've become, and don't expect us to change. And we might find that there are things about ourselves that we're proud of, and we're quite pleased as to where we've ended up, what we're like. But there may be things about us, and I'm guessing that for most of us there is, there may be things about us that we're not proud of, that we look at and say, ooh, do the people around me really have to put up with me? Uh, there may be things about us that, that we're just not happy with. Um, or maybe there's things that we're blind to that maybe we should not be happy with. That can happen too. But either way, we might feel kind of stuck. Like we might want to say to others, look, this is me. I was born this way or because of my background, I became this way. And so what am I supposed to do about that? And so we're stuck. Well, we have good news today from John chapter 3. And in John chapter 3, Jesus describes to us the change that comes to us because of our relationship with God through Jesus and because of his work on us through the Holy Spirit. It is such a huge change that he uses the language of being, well, you can probably guess it, being born again. And that word being born again, it also means being born from above. It has that meaning too. And so we're going to take a look at this idea of being born again uh, today. And it really is good news when we're in a bad news word world, we are feeling kind of stuck with ourselves and what we've become. The good news is change is possible. So let's take a look at this and let's take a look at the first thing we want to think about is, is what influences us. And when we look on our past, we can see that maybe there are things there that have influenced us and, and have contributed to what we've become and what we're like. And we might, like, we might say to others, you know, give me a break. I am the way I am because, well, look at what I had to live through in the past. Uh, look at the influences upon me. And it can be things like uh, our, our, our parents and our family that we grew up with, our siblings that we grew up with. It can be things like what we experience in school, or it can be all kinds of things, uh, experiences that we have that really influence us and have an impact on us. Um, for myself, I really feel, uh, just looking back, the, I feel kind of guilty in a way that I had a, such a good childhood uh, when compared to so many people. And there are so many people who just can't look back and see that, but, but I did. And I'm just thankful to the Lord that I had wonderful parents and a wonderful brother growing up with a great experience. But not everybody has that. And oftentimes we can look back and say, ooh, you know, I am the way I am because, well, look at mom and dad or that kind of thing or look at so-and-so in my life, or such and such that happened. Uh, personally, I can sort of relate a little bit in that, you know, I've often described myself as quiet and shy. And I can look back at events in my life where it didn't help me break out of my shell any. Now, there were some that did, uh, but especially well, as a child, I can look back and see things that really, um, if anything, just drove me further into my shell. So I think we can all do that. Look back and say, I am the way I am because of look back at, at my nurture, look at, look at how I was raised. This is what I've become. So we look back at the influences upon us. But Jesus says to us, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. In other words, you have this opportunity before you to actually be born again. That's such a huge change that's coming into you. It's like hitting the reset button and saying, hold up all those influences on us from our past those aren't the things that are going to influence us now. Now that we're in a relationship with God, it's starting over. It's literally like being born again, starting over. And it's, we can, again, the word is also being born from above. It's, it's God is our main influence now. And so how is God going to impact us as we grow now? So maybe you grew up with parents that were just never there for you. And, um, and so that's, that's been a big influence on your life and has kind of helped form who you are now and how you, what, what you're like. Uh, just growing up with parents that never were there for you, but <laughs> hit the reset button. Remember, you're being born again. You're starting, you're starting back from scratch now. And so as you grow up now, your Heavenly Father is always there for you. And just a prayer away, but He's always with you. So that's a very different experience, a very different, that's gonna change us. 
or, or maybe maybe looking back you had people in your lives um, maybe your parents but maybe somebody else who are just always putting you down and so just constant put downs you you learn of, that affects you and and maybe has led you to become the way you are now and become who you are now those constant put downs start over hit the reset button born again you're growing up now different and now instead of put downs what do we have but what does god say to us and what does god say to us but i created you in my image that's a big lesson to learn but also i i gave my life for you at the cross because i want to be in relationship with you there's there's another thing and so these things start to impact us and become the influence in our lives instead of the put downs Another thing, we, we might have grown up with this sense of it's every man, woman and child for themselves. Everybody's just out for themselves. And so you learn to just be out for yourself too. And, and, and that's what you learn. That's all you've known. Again, hit the reset button. Start over. You're, you're growing up now different, with a different influence, with God's influence. And, and what is God like? But, but God's love for us. Uh, that that God is for us and not against us, uh, that, that Jesus came, as he says, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So you're going to learn from that then, this idea of it's not just about me, it's not just, as, as maybe we were raised, it's, it's just, just about me. No, it's not. It's, it's about others. It's about big generosity and such things. So growing up different. So basically, those are just some examples, and I'm sure you can think of a lot of other examples to add to that list of ways that we are impacted growing up, how people impact us, how there are these influencers in our lives and influences in our lives. But now that we come to a deep relationship with God through Jesus Christ, now that we are born again, now that we are born from above with God's influence on our lives, now we can grow up different this time. Now we can be changed. Uh, and so God does that work in us. So that's the first thing, the, the influencer. Uh, God becomes the big influence in our lives now when we, when we, when we are born again, we start from scratch. Uh, we, start, we start right back at the beginning. Which leads us to a second point, that while we start from scratch, all that change doesn't come at once. And this might be um, one thing that we do wrong sometimes in Christian circles is we have this expectation that somebody gives their lives to the Lord. Next thing you know, they're completely changed. Sometimes that happens. But even amongst those among whom that happens, there's still change to come. There's still growth possible. Uh, there's still growth necessary. And I've heard of people changed in big ways. Uh, I had a friend who, who spoke to me once about uh, how he came to know the Lord and Prior to this, he was into drugs and alcohol. Any desire for that kind of stuff just instantly vanished. That was a good news thing for him. But some people come to know the Lord and they're still addicted. They still have long ways to grow. And the same might be true for us in many ways, that we still have a lot of ways to grow yet. And you know, when you think of it, it's absolutely appropriate that Jesus uses, again, this in <clears throat> this idea of being born again or born from above. Because think back to when you were a baby, when you were first born. And do you remember it? Um, I don't remember. And I'm so glad I cannot remember being born because I'm sure it was traumatic. Um, but if we were able to remember, if we were able to think through what we were thinking at the time, and goodness knows what an infant thinks anyway, but uh, if we were able to go back to that time, when we're born, do we suddenly think, wow, everything's different now. Look, I can see there's light. Previously it was all dark, but now there's light. Everything's different. But is everything different? It's not actually. We might also think, well, I've still got these little arms and legs that don't do much for me. <laughs> and look at all these big people. How come there's these big people around here and I'm the only one here that can't jump up and walk and talk and all this kind of stuff. You see, when an infant is born, there is a huge change in that moment of birth, but there are huge changes to come. And when those changes don't come, there's something wrong. There's something medically big time wrong. And so we, we look to do something about that, but there's big changes to come. And the Christian life is like that. 
that if we can't see any changes to come, there's something wrong. Because it's not all instant. We're starting from over. We're starting from scratch. We're starting now with God's influence in our lives. But it's a long journey. In fact, it's a lifelong journey of, of growth and learning and being in relationship with God. So that's something to keep in mind. But we might want to have grace for others when maybe they're not uh, uh, growing as quickly as we would hope. We want to also have grace for ourselves when maybe it's we ourselves are not having that change, that response to God's influence us, upon us as quickly as we might hope. And so grace uh, for ourselves, uh, the fact that we're on a journey, it takes some time, but also challenge to ourselves, have we got stuck somewhere in that journey? Remember, we've been born again, we've been born from above, we have the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. Are we, are we availing ourselves of that wonderful resource, that relationship with God that will move us along in our lives. So that's, that's the second thing. So the first thing is God's influence. Is, God is now the big influence in our lives. And that, and that's going to change us. But the second thing is it's a lifelong journey of change. And so to look forward to that. Here's the third thing. And that is that we're, we're going to end up being a bit different uh, as God influences us and changes us. We're going to end up being a bit different. And, and you know, where you grow up, can mean that you end up being a bit different from somebody that grows up somewhere else. Uh, for example, I spent the first six years of my life growing up in Scotland, basically, uh, for the most of it. And so when we came to Canada in 1978, um, my dad had his English accent, my mum had her Irish accent, and my brother and I, we, were, we had our Scottish accents that we were working on. And so quite a mixed up family, but here we are in Canada, and in grade two, that was the first year of school in Canada for me, I stood out like a sore thumb because I sounded different. I had an accent. I talked different. Never mind the accent. I had different expressions, different ways of communicating things. Uh, I dressed different. <laughs> I really stood out that way. And I remember some kids picking on me for that and uh, all kinds of things. And even though we'd come to Canada, I'm still living in a British family, basically, at that point for years. So a lot of the customs and Britishisms we brought with us. And, and so we, we kind of acted a bit different. We, we would eat Marmite, for example, you know, craziness, crazy things that Canadians would never do. So now it's true that by grade three, I'd sorted all that out and really started fitting in nicely. But in grade two, I really stood out like a sore thumb. And there's the point. We don't want to fit in. <laughs> you know, in grade two, when I came to Canada, I wanted to fit in and I fit in beautifully. Now I, I even watch hockey, can't skate, but I can watch hockey. But in grade two, I, I really wanted to fit in. But as Christians, when we're born again, when we're born from above, we want to let go of this idea of fitting in because someday we're going home. You know, we came to Canada, but we were coming to stay in Canada. And so it's appropriate to, to fit in. Uh, proud of my British heritage, but it's important to fit in. But you know, as somebody who's born again in a relationship with God, we're going to stick out as different. We're going to speak differently. We're going to have different, uh, different customs, different things we do. We're going to act differently. But we don't want to fit in because someday we're, we're going home. That's truly where our heart lies. And so that's another thing we want to see about being born again, being born from above. We really are born into a new kingdom, a different kingdom. Yeah, I'm as Canadian as they come now, but I'm also from the kingdom of God. And that's truly where my heart is. And that's where I'm going and uh, learning to become a kingdom person now, but the future uh, will take us to the kingdom. So there's three things so far. This idea of uh, God is now the big influence in our lives. Uh, this idea of it's a lifelong journey of growth when we were born again. When we, we're growing up uh, even as adults. But also this idea of we're going to be different and that's okay to not resist being different but to, to go with it. And here's the last one. We do look forward to a big change in the future in our situation. And we might think that so far we've been talking about the change in our character. And yes, absolutely, we have. And we've been talking about, really, we can talk about the fruit of the Spirit, of this, this 
fruit of having God in our lives, uh, of love, peace, joy, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, and, and all those kinds of things uh, that are listed there in Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit, yeah, we've been talking about character, how God's changing our character. But we might say, okay, that's fine, I'm changing that way, but I still feel stuck in my situation. I still feel stuck with financial pressures I had before I became a Christian are still there. Um, problems I had with with work and trying to uh, trying to and the problems in the workplace they're still there. Um, all kinds of different challenges, uh, health conditions that I had before I came to know Jesus, they're still there. Uh, all these different kinds of things that we might say. Well, what about these situations? They haven't changed for us. We might still feel stuck in those. Well, one thing to say about that is as we are changing, how we respond to those situations will change. And that may actually help some of those situations. Uh, as we are changing in our character, that might help some of the problems in the workplace. If it's relationship difficulties, it might help with some, uh, some problems in the marriage. If we're having marital difficulties, all these different kinds of things as we're being changed that will actually spill out to bring change uh, to the situations that we find ourselves in. But even so, there may be things that it doesn't change. Things like our health might still be in trouble. But here's the point. We might think that our situation is dire, but actually when you're born again, when you're born from above, you enter the kingdom of heaven, that's a great situation to be in. You're now a child of God. Someday we're going home. That's the situation. Yeah, there might be dire circumstances that we're in. They might even get worse on us. But yet, actually, the big picture of our situation is that someday we go home. And so we can hang on till then. We can do the best we can till then. We can uh, we can respond with a, a character that's growing uh, with God's influence upon us until then. And so our situation actually is really good. And so, yes, we've been born again into a different situation, into a new reality where once we were separated from God because of our sin. Now our situation is different. We've been reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus Christ, through his grace, through his love, and we've responded to that and become his children. We have a new situation, and that is going to impact our future in a big, big way as we look forward to eternal life. Uh, it's not long after Jesus says uh, what he does here in John 3.3, 3, that he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 not too long after speaking about being born again, he speaks about our wonderful situation of looking forward to eternal life. So you may feel, and I may feel, like we're kind of stuck sometimes. <laughs> Especially stuck with who we are and what we've become, what we're like. We may not even like what we've become like. Let's remember that through Jesus Christ, we have this opportunity to be born again, born from above, of this huge change that is open for us, that is offered to us. And sometimes we forget that and we get kind of stuck, even as somebody who believes in Jesus, we get kind of stuck and we forget that indeed he has offered that we can become born again, born from above, that huge change that God brings into our lives. So let's look to God to be the big influence in our lives. Let's look for, for God's influence upon us. Let's be gracious when we recognize it is a journey, it takes a, a lifelong journey. Uh, let's, let's not resist the fact that we are gonna be different, that's okay. And let's remember that we couldn't be in a better situation, being reconciled to God, looking forward to eternal life with God, our Heavenly Father, it couldn't be better. So I hope that has helped you if you feel stuck. And if you do feel stuck, well, let's pray about it and ask the Lord to remind us, yeah, we can be born again. We really can start over. And let's do that.